the circle is going to be the outline of the pendant of the necklace. And then the horse is going to be cut out of the middle. And so you're going to see us actually printing this onto the acrylic that you chose, but only if I can figure out how to untie this knot full of strings. There we go. I got that. You hold on to that because we're going to need that later. Okay, Brooke? Now, would you like to stand up here or would you like to sit over there while we talk about what we're doing? Sit down? Okay, great. We'll call you back in just a little bit. Thank you so much, Brooke. So you can see Shell's actually using Adobe Illustrator to create this design, but there are a lot of different tools and techniques that you can use to design for a laser. The most common is vector software. And if you have a laser at your local makerspace, this is probably what they'll recommend you use. It's the one tool that'll work across the board. The two most popular vector uh, packages for designing with the laser, actually three are Inkscape, which is free software, CorelDRAW, and uh, Adobe Illustrator, which you see here today. In general, the color lets you decide what you want to do. So different colors can be assigned to do different things. Now there's two principal ways the laser works, cutting and engraving. In the cutting mode, it actually moves the head of the laser around, focusing a beam of laser light moving slowly at high power to go vaporize, usually eight one thousandths of an inch thick trail as it goes through and cutting out the material. The other option is that it will engrave an image on your material. In this mode, the laser moves back and forth like a dot matrix printer. Anybody remember dot matrix? Yeah, dot matrix printer. So it actually goes back and forth and it's called a raster mode. And the laser fires with the precision of milliseconds on and off, discoloring the surface of the laser, uh, of the material, allowing it to draw a bitmap image. By combining those, you can do all sorts of tremendous things. So for example, if you look at this wallet, it prints in about 15 minutes. And to make it, you take a flat piece of material, you lay it down, and you have the laser cut the outline shape, cut tiny little circles that you can use to go lace it up when you're done, and then engrave whatever you want on the outside. So this is something that you can uh, print in about 15 minutes and that takes about another 15 minutes, uh, maybe half an hour if you're doing it for the first time, maybe 45 minutes if you're me, to actually assemble it. But I have actually done this so I can vouch that it can be done. This is an example of a pure engraving. Anybody have any idea what this is? Shout it out if you know. Anyone? <laughs> Seaweed. This is actually nori for sushi. We had, to, we had to put it in an acrylic block so that it wouldn't get broken in transit. But you can actually engrave a shape into seaweed and then go use that to wrap your sushi and create something. So this is an engraving. Right now, Shell is gonna design something that's just gonna be cut because it'll run a little faster while we're waiting. Engraves tend to take longer because the head has to move over every square inch of the material. Now, there's a lot of different materials you can use. We already talked about acrylic, we already talked about wood, uh, and we've talked about, uh, and, and we mentioned leather, but you can engrave on glass. You can't cut glass, but it gives you this wonderful frosted look that you can see, that you can put on it. Similarly, you can engrave MacBooks. Now, with a traditional laser, it's a little tricky to do this. Let me tell you how. You create the design, then you tell it to cut a rectangle that's the size of the MacBook. Then you very, very carefully place the MacBook precisely in the rectangle. And you focus, and with the traditional laser, you focus by moving the material up and down. The Glowforge has autofocus, so it'll actually just do that for you. But you focus the laser on the surface. And then with the traditional laser, you tell it to draw with a little red laser dot the outline of the thing, and you watch really carefully and make sure that it goes in exactly the right spot. Then you hold your breath, stomp your foot three times, hit the button, hope for the best, and if all works out well, you get something like this. Uh, Glowforge can actually recognize a MacBook, so when you put it in, it configures all the settings for you automatically, and you can pick a template or put your own drawing on top of it and just hit engrave. In fact, the Glowforge can rec recognize a host of materials uh, that we provide, like acrylics and leathers and pre-finished hardwoods. So when you put them in, it'll automatically decide on the power and speed. Now, if you're at a local makerspace, you have a different challenge because every material works differently. If you go to Home Depot and buy plywood, 
it's not clear what sort of glue they used. It's not clear if there are knots in the center. So what you do is you draw a series of squares or circles and you cut out repeatedly, trying different power settings and different uh, speeds to get exactly the right material setting. With a Glowforge, you put the material in, it'll read those automatically, and off you go. All right, it looks like we've got our horsey. Wait, design check. Brooke, thumbs up. Is that a good horsey? Can I see the thumb? Thumbs up, all right, we're good to go. So right now, Shell's gonna show you how we print. There's actually a plugin to Adobe Illustrator. You can also take a PDF or an SVG from any file and use it. And in fact, you can use things from high-end sophisticated software like uh, Fusion 360, which you can get for free as a maker through the Maker Edition, um, or even stuff like Photoshop and take a bitmap and upload it. So you saw Shell just said, print this to Glowforge. And because I didn't put the material in yet, she's gonna identify the material. And we're gonna start out with a piece of, uh, a piece of very thin wood, wood veneer, that I'm gonna set right here in the center of the bed. Now, here's the point where we need all the good vibes of everybody in the audience rooting for our Wi-Fi. Because the Wi-Fi access point is right here, and the Glowforge is right here, but sometimes it can be a little bit hairy. So, the Glowforge has a camera in the lid. And what's really cool is, it can pull an image. This is actually the Glowforge that's in our booth, <laughs> Josh Forge. So now we're gonna switch over and get the Glowforge that's here. And pull an image from the lid, which will show us the entirety of the bed. Now that means you can take your drawing, your sketch, whatever it is, and simply drop it in place, as Shell's doing right now. Now, this is instead of what you do at your local makerspace with the traditional laser, which is you'd use a red dot, and you put the dot in the top right corner of where you expect it to go, and then you tell it to sort of trace the outline and watch to make sure it didn't go over the edge of it. Um, so that's pretty much it. She just sent it to the Glowforge, and this is the part where we, we hope for great Wi-Fi, and it'll send it over to be ready to print. And when it is, the funny thing about a Glowforge is it's only got one button. There's no screen. There's no toggles or dials. All you do is drive it from the website and send it over. And so, you can see the light right here is lit up and pulsing. And wait, Brooke, I need help. Come here, quick, 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 quick. Are you ready to print your the first part of your necklace? Okay, I'm gonna hoist you up, okay? Here. Whoa. Give that button one big tap. Boom, all right. Can we switch over to the camera? Do we have the... Uh, the AV Mojo. We'll actually print a couple pieces of it. So if this one, we don't get it in time, because it's only 18 seconds, we'll do the next one. Do you mind staying right here? I might need you to push the button again. Awesome, okay. If you watch, oh, and that was it. It was so quick. Oh, there we go, so it was finished. We'll get the next piece ready. Which material do we want next? Do we want Brooks pink acrylic? All right, let's do that. Here we go. So I'm going to pull out the wood veneer that we just did. And next, we've got the pink acrylic. This is looking great. Okay, Brooke, you did such a great job with a button. Do you mind if I press you into duty again? Can you do one more button press for me? Fantastic. So you can see, what, come over here for a second. You can see that this is the wood front piece and this is gonna be the acrylic back piece. And so she's gonna stick those together to make your necklace. How's that sound? Awesome. All right. What's kind of cool is because this runs over the internet, uh, Shell could actually print to our booth or even to uh, Glowforges at our office back in Seattle. But it'll only start if you push the button. So it requires somebody there and present to use at all times. And so that's why we have that where you need Brooke to push your button for you. You might be able to learn to do it yourself, but you know, watch Brooke and you'll get the idea. So the materials here, you'll notice, have a protective coating on it. And that's really helpful because the laser can discolor the surface of the material. The materials we sell come with a protective coating. If you're doing this at a makerspace, I recommend using something like blue painter's tape that you put on top and then peel off when it's done so that you get the best surface finish. And uh, one thing to bear in mind, get a lot more material than you need because it takes a while to dial in the settings, and sometimes you get unpleasant surprises like knots in the middle of your plywood, so it doesn't cut all the way through. Materials like acrylic are pretty reliable, but natural woods, hardwoods and the like, especially plywoods, can be a little hit or miss. Oh, I see the button. Do you think you can reach over and give that another tap? 
All right. So if you look right here on the screen, you can see that black thing, which is the head moving around and cutting the outline of your pendant for the necklace. The actual laser isn't that black thing. The actual laser is this giant glass tube that you can see right there. It's actually filled with carbon dioxide and a mixture of other gases. Have you ever heard of carbon dioxide? Could you make some carbon dioxide for me right now? Blow my hands. That's carbon dioxide. That's what comes out of your mouth. And so we take carbon dioxide, other gases, we put them in a long tube. Then we put high voltage electricity through it like a neon sign so it glows. An infrared light comes out the end. It's that infrared light that we focus down to cut and engrave. Shell's gonna, oh right, I forgot to actually get Shell the second part of the necklace. So she can assemble that for you. Now that carbon dioxide lets off infrared gas or infrared light that we focus down and that's how we, that's how we can cut and engrave the final product. So Shell's gonna assemble this right now. Are you ready with your necklace? You ready with, okay. She's gonna get that ready and then we're gonna put it together. And we might, I, I don't wanna make any promises. We might even have enough time for a little something extra. Okay, we'll see if we have enough time for a, maybe we can do some engraving and people can see what engraving looks like. Does that sound good? Awesome. So you can see a few other things here. This is an example of something that was made with acrylic and hardwoods. I, oh, let's see. Uh, yes, uh, plywood, not hardwoods. So this planter, we didn't make the plants. We're not quite there yet technologically, but we're working on it. Was actually printed out of these two materials and just uses acrylic glue and Elmer's glue to hold it together. It's amazing what you can do with Elmer's glue. In fact, if you come over to our booth, you will see a dollhouse that is three feet tall that is made of nothing more than plywood, Elmer's glue, and house paint. And come on over, we'll look at one, over, one more thing over here. Could you hold this up and show it to everybody? Okay, so this is a coaster that's actually made out of walnut. It's made out of abalone shell. And if you turn it around and show in the back, cork. And what's cool is you can actually engrave a place for the abalone in the walnut and engrave a place for the cork in the walnut so that everything slots together. So that's held together with super glue and a little bit of spray shellac on the outside. You can even see, do you know what this is? It's called the Space Needle. It's from where we're from in Seattle. So this Space Needle here was actually made out of here. I'll hoist it up because I know there's some folks in the back. Whoa! And I'll keep my microphone away from the speaker. So the Space Needle is actually made from plywood and it's created out of parts that fit entirely in the Glowforge. Now, there's two models of Glowforge that you can use. The Glowforge Basic, which is what you're seeing here, can fit materials that are 12 by 20 inches. So it can cut and engrave up to that size. The Pro, oh, here we go. The Pro gives you a slot on the front and on the back. So you can put much larger material in. And what's really great is the camera lets you cut or engrave part of it then move it and pick up where you left off. So you can process much larger materials. Now everything you see in our booth was done with the basic, including this, because you can puzzle piece together some really huge and tremendous projects. But the Pro gives you that extra degree of flexibility. It's also about 20% faster and has enhanced cooling if you're using it for something like an assembly line. So Shell's finishing up the, uh, the necklace right here. And Brooke, are you ready to show everybody your creation? Does it look like a horse? It doesn't look like a moose, does it? Okay, good. Those mooses are trouble. <laughs> All right, could you show the whole audience your horse event? Big round of applause for Brooke, our designer. Thank you, Brooke. Go ahead, you can sit right down. And uh, we may try one more quick little engraving. 